Awesome. Thank you. I just, uh, you know, I was just looking at my my computer screen and seeing those words, um, you are holy, and then seeing all of us just worshiping around the nations. And um, just the the image that I saw in the heavenlies was, and I'm still seeing it, it's like this heavens over the earth just opening. But initially it was just like over different nations because there's a few nations here and continents have these spirals around like cloud, cloud formations uh, around Australia, around um, Myanmar and Asia, uh, Sri Lanka, you know, Myanmar and Asia, around Africa, uh, from Kenya and Uganda and just spirals. But then all of a sudden, as we kept worshiping and saying, you're holy, they joined together. And this it became this amazing portal. And I just felt um, Father himself saying, uh, like a reminder, like, remember, you are holy. That's me. You, you are me. Remember you are holy. Mm -hmm. and, and that scripture that says, be holy, not do holy. Be holy for I am holy. It was just like saying, you know, remember you are holy because that's my surname. You have me. And uh, it was just this amazing experience of like, what, what is what, the impossible is possible when we have him who has declared to us that we are the way he is. And uh, we walk on this earth holy. And so just this sense of, you know, if you would close your eyes and just have your hand on your chest for a few minutes and just say this, you know, uh, Father, I receive your promise, your word, that I am holy. And then just hear Father saying, you are holy. Like you are holy. No conditions, you are holy. You are holy. And just receive it. Who thank you, Father. Like my child, you are holy. Nothing will change that. Release that upon my, upon the earth, upon my sons and daughters, upon my lost sons and daughters, upon the kings and the priests of this earth. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, heaven and earth is full of your glory. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So beautiful. His presence, you know, so beautiful. Uh, I might, I might um, jump on the back of that. And I don't know, uh, Keno, if you can put that picture up again. And I don't, I have a look and see whether you see this, but in that, that cloud, can you see the red, reddish cloud uh, above? And to me, it looks like a hand. Um, the beginning of a hand and a palm at the end, on the right-hand side, a palm is what I see. And I see it like an open palm upwards. Um, and then as I keep looking at it, I also see it as a palm uh, turned towards the city and, and uh, almost like something pouring um, onto the city. And what I felt the Lord saying is that, you know, he's got us in the palm of his hand. He's got us, and we know that from scripture, he's got us in the palm of his hand, but I just felt that today he just wanted to remind us that he's got us in the palm of his hand. And then the words that I heard was not withholding. He's not withholding anything from us. His inheritance is fully ours and he's not with, withholding anything. And so when that hand, when I saw the hand almost like turn and then I, I felt it was like 
everything that he has is, is being poured out on this earth. And he's willing to, are we able to receive that? Are we able to imagine that and receive that, that whatever he has is for us? That's his promise because he said his inheritance is ours. We are his sons, amen? So if we are his sons, then he has said that what Jesus did gave us that inheritance. Whatever is Jesus' inheritance is now our inheritance too. And uh, are we willing to steward that well? Not just know about it, but actually say, Father, we are here to, to receive whatever it is that you've given us and we will steward it well. And stewarding it well is sometimes um, what I felt him saying is actually receiving it and using it rather than knowing about it and being so grateful to him, which we should be, but then sometimes we can be so grateful and then we just leave it there. We're not willing to take it and steward it. We're not willing to receive it and use it here on earth. And I just felt that he was saying, my sons and daughters, I'm bringing you into that place of maturity that you can now receive it and you can steward it. And I'm showing you how to do it. So I hope that blesses each and every one here because that's for all of us here. Amen. <laughs> for me, I think uh, when the song was playing, I was just asking the Lord, uh, you know, what are you saying in this? And uh, somehow the scripture came to me was, you know, he says, I, you know, he is the, his throne is, uh, heaven is his throne room, earth is his footstool, right? Uh, and uh, what that means is, you know, it's not that he, you know, we are servants to him, but of all the planets on the earth in the universe, he's got his foot, found his foot firmly on earth, right? That it shows the uniqueness and the love that he has. He's actually taking, you know, very much in connecting with us. And we'd like what, uh, you know, the scripture, uh, Philippians 2 6, that. Uh, can put out there that you know every knee shall bow to him every tongue shall confess that he is lord and uh, what i'm you know what he's saying is like what pastor rubika was saying that he loves us so much he cares so much that he has got his foot firmly on the on earth on everything that he has created on this earth and uh, you know and and the best part we know that like what Papa Luke used to say, that earth is a colony of uh, heaven, right? <clears throat> so when that means he is so personal with us on earth, he's so personal with us on earth that he wants, as we worship him, he, he, he wants us to really worship him uh, because he's the one who's reaching out to us first all the time. We and we have never reached out to him. He reached out to us first, right? And now he's he, he the more we reciprocate with him, the more he's going to show his affection and his love. Uh, and, and that's what it is all. That's what I felt from this song that his foot is firmly on this earth, and that everything that he has planned for this earth to be fulfilled before the return of Jesus will have to be done. And he will make sure that he's done through us who are his children. And, and that's, that's what I felt about this song. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wow. Awesome. So, so good. Um, yeah, Jerry, Jerry, this is, this is for you. Um, you know, when we were talking earlier and starting to mention in all this uh, uh, possibilities that are with us in the new year and uh, uh, you 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 made a move you shifted from where you know you you shifted and uh, when you made that shift i see an activating it's like something has been activated in you you know the way i can describe it is when you know in isaiah when he saw the lord and saw the angels and you know and then he saw himself and he made some uh, uh, comment that nobody asked him to make. Quit Pops Matthew have corrected many, many times. But after that, then he heard the voice. He heard the Lord saying, who shall I send? Who shall go for us? And Isaiah, um, 
Isaiah said, here I am, send me. I saw you actually literally leap. And uh, you, you, there is that readiness for you. And um, you, you've come, be, you're beginning to realize the magnitude and the, the power of what is awaiting for you. The world mm. is waiting for you. And mm. that, that shift you made when you say, oh, can I cancel all my things? These are not just, uh, don't think you are, you, you are just uh, um, uh, joking or reacting to what you're hearing. It is something that is coming from who you are and what I wait for you. The world is waiting for you, Jerry, Ambassador Jerry. The world is waiting. And that voice, and I, you actually have said, here I am. You have reached out and you say, here I am, send me. So get Amen. ready, okay? And yes, sir. It's not, you didn't just say, shall I cancel? It's, it's not just about canceling because you are entering into something bigger. You are entering mm -hmm. anything you are doing, anything, anywhere you are going, you, you are not losing anything. It's, it's not taking away anything from you. If anything, it is multiplying. You are moving Amen. on to the next higher and higher and level for all that heaven has for you. So don't uh, by sitting up don't slump back into your seat again and they think it's not gonna happen because it is already happening amen it started happening right now hope that yeah. makes sense for you yes of course i'm already i already made my plans how can i uh shift things so yeah amen amen so it's exciting thank you so much Papa. amen amen join the club jerry <laughs> Um, just to add, if I can add to Papa Luke, Jerry, I really also felt that <clears throat> the Lord um, is going to make you a mobile family. And uh, so it is not for you to leave uh, without Jenica and LJ, but there will be this uh, seasonal change. So it's not going to happen instantly where you begin to sow into your family, a mobile family, a family that is uh, nomads, uh, nomadic in that sense that uh, where you are, where the family is, that is where Jesus is. So there's no such place. There might be a base, but there's no not such thing as a home. A home is everywhere you go. And there's this journey for you in the years, in the in the years to come, but it's going to be this next year, starting from November for the next 12 months, between 2022 and 2023, there's going to be this period where God's going to shift you into ideas and thoughts that are bigger than what you've seen in Sri Lanka, and you become nomadic. And, and nomadic, not in a negative way, it's a very exciting way um, of being able to uh, do what the Lord says, where I send you, you shall reap what you have not sown. And so I felt the Lord say, it's time to upgrade, son. You've been sowing and reaping. Now it's time to reap where you haven't sown. And so put your efforts not in sowing, but put your efforts in now hearing where I send you and recreating a new vision and a new culture of how you want your family to act, behave, respond to kingdom ways. Um, so it's, uh, and I just saw the, did you come with us to Masai Mara? I know. We, we, no, you uh, weren't. I skipped that. Yeah, I, I saw the Masai, this is how they, they build, they live lifestyle, and then they move on to the next place. And there's no, there's nothing that connects uh. them to the, to this earth. And I just felt that God's upgrading the three of you, and it's going to be done in in uh, in Jenica's life too and it's a journey it's not a forcing where you're going to be moving from the idea of citizens of heaven to ambassadors of heaven where there is an ambassadorial uh, release and and so when papa luke said take this seriously take this seriously like what you declared was heaven saying you are an ambassador you're not no more just a citizen of heaven like heaven's knocked on your door and said will you go for us so very excited for you where it's so much, so much relating because uh, Janika says that uh, this work that she's doing, it's so much, uh, so much uh, time taken. I said, it's just for two more years. And I, I have been telling that, I've been telling that, I, that, this is something that I've been prophesying that it's only for two more years, you'll be doing this, and then we'll be traveling. So... That is something that, and uh, when you said that, it's like just, and then Jenica says how how we are going to figure out uh, finances. I said, if you figure, if you think about that, then I won't be here. So you just leave that aside. And and also the stationary project 
it's a, I am, this time I, I've trained the 40s. So this time my, one of my friends are going to do the coordinating part. So I just had to look, I just had to watch him do it and then be there with him. So, and then, then the, then the mighty step work, I've been already doing that, uh, the, the two, two Ds, which I'm going to work on the third D and the fourth D, which is, so it will be helpful for me to move out so that my work will continue in Sri Lanka. So, so yeah, this is, this is amazing. So this has confirmed that this is what I should do for the next, uh, next few months and then and be ready. Next definitely. 12 months, so yes. Next I am always your planning. Process. Next 12 months planning process. And when Jenica asked that question, they said to her, and you just go talk to the implementers because we're already there. Like you're not you're not diving into unknown waters. You are of working with water. You already know how to handle this stuff. So it's going to be she, exciting stuff. She's already put the put the application for the boys' uh, passport. So she's already ready. So she's awesome. yeah. awesome. there. You go. Yeah. Wow. I think you should give it less than two years. Papa Luke's got a testimony on that one. We, we gave him we gave him a year and six months. Boom. <laughs> We're like, what? Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That is so good. So good. Wow. Awesome. I got something for Lemak. Lemak yes. Quick. Yes, Monkeo. Yeah. Um is Lemak here? According to yes. according to the the picture on the distant. The song, you know, there is a, a very narrow pathway that that shows up there, and uh, Lemek was walking along that way, and then you you come up at the other side of the river, and you stood there like you are fishing in that part of the bigger side of the river from the other side, and uh, I sense the Lord is uh, saying to you, I have prepared you, I have taking you up and uh, lifted you it is now time for you to to do what he is expecting of you to do probably fishing out in that river means uh, you know involving yourself in the bigger work of uh, bringing souls those, those that will come around you to the lord um whatever and he is saying to you do not fear because i am with you and I have equipped you, and I'm still equipping you. You're going to do great things for me. That's what I sense the Lord is saying to you. And uh, you will never lack everything that you needed to do this thing, to, 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 to go for the Lord. He is your provider, the big gyra for you. He's going to make a way where there seems to be no way. And uh, those that will come around you or uh, those that you will meet it will not be difficult for them to re easily accept what you are telling them and what you're saying because the lord has already gone before you so, the, does that make sense my dear to you can't hear you lamek we can't hear you He's unmuted, but uh, his microphone is not working, Lamek. Uh, what, what your input, output is not, input so you are, not uh, working. You are not muted. Oh, he yeah. can hear you. He says, Amen. I can lip read. <laughs> he said, Thank you. Oh, uh, and, 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 and I, think he has, I think this is an acceptance. <laughs> um, Lamek, uh, let me just add on to what Mama Carol said. Um, I just keep hearing the word upgrade. And, and the word that it's time for you to change. Um, so there's a detaching from something and there's an, a new attachment. And uh, I, I he heard this sentence while Mom Carol was talking, which was that the enemy of our best is our good. And you've done some good things, but now it's time to cease from that because there is the best that is to come. And so we can se you can celebrate the good and want to still continue with the good but it's almost that the lord says if you don't if you continue with the good you'll miss the best and there's this disconnection that's going to happen and it doesn't have to be and i felt the lord saying some of the things you're going to disconnect from is not because things are going badly but it's because you have actually reached a level of amazing good stuff 
but now there's a time to quit and quitting is not always when things are going bad but quitting can also happen when things are going amazing and it's just that sense of an upgrade and it's based on and, and the theme of our conference in january is from a prince to a king and i just sense that's for you that prince to a king it's like i've i've watched you these years and i can say there's something you're connecting now that it's time to upgrade and your small thinking is going to become big thinking because you've got big vision. Your spirit has such a big vision, but you've just not known how to land it because you've had the wrong transportation. You've been trying to land a, a car and God's given you like a huge plane. And now he's just upgrading you to have that ability to, to process a how to run a huge plane so you can land this and take off in a, in a much better way. And so the next five years is going to be this transitional. Uh, it's The transition is going to happen quickly, but the next five years is going to be this opening of doors to your best so you don't remain in your good. Bless you, bro. Uh, I have also um, something for Pastor Ronald and uh, Stella. And um, I just go straight to it. It's not a picture, but I sense the Lord is saying to you, my, my children, I love you, my child, both of you, um, Stella and Pastor Ronald. God is seeing things in you that you yourself can't uh, see. And uh, is preparing, preparing you for bigger, bigger picture, bigger things that you yourself think uh, how, how am I going to arrive to that, uh, you know, to that, to that thing or that, uh, uh, what, what will I say? Yeah, you, you, you're just, you're just imagining how are you going to arrive to that, arrive to that place of what God is, has placed in your heart to do. But I'm telling you, as, as I sense the Lord is saying, it is not difficult because he's dear for you. And God is saying, I love you and I love you as you are who you are. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm making a big way for you, opening a big way. Because I can see your heart. Your heart is for the Lord. Your heart is, is pure. And uh, he, he is going to take you to that place where he has prepared for you, where you will be and you will see the joy of the Lord coming so so great around you and around the people that you will touch well done my son my daughter that's what i'm getting for both of you god bless you amen i receive that i receive it so much i don't know this is god this is god i i had the same i was i had it i was my heart was going through something like you're trying to explain as like how is it going to happen but now i see god is right here amen thank thank you mama for this thank you mama for this word thank you for speaking to me this is god speaking to me and answering exactly the question i had about three hours ago god wow. bless you thank greetings you. to everyone wow mm. so good <laughs> Thank you, Mom Carol and uh, Pastor Ronald and to everyone else here. Can you see how much our father loves us? Amen. He, he, before a word is upon our lips, he already has uh, the, um, he has already heard it and he's already sent forth the answer to us. Amen. Amen. And that is so precious and so awesome. Um, and uh, we have a new dad in the house and perhaps mom there too. I'm not sure. Can we say congratulations to Stephen? He is in Dr. the Ruben, you just had <laughs> <laughs> oh, We had the congratulations. I'm so excited. And I just can't keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at we that had smile. the news. That's... See, that's how oh. our father smiles every time we are born into the family. You know, you know, Stephen. Stephen, I like the, yeah. the pictures, the emojis you posted there. There's two people laughing, and there are six, seven people showing love. <laughs> I believe you're going to have seven children, my friend. Okay, two parents oh. with seven children. <laughs> oh, Perry. Come on, That's Perry. the impression wow. I had. 
That's what I felt. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, it's been a hell. Uh, it's been a beautiful week of running up and down, <laughs> and uh, it's been easy. I assure you, it hasn't been easy. Uh, she was to have a cesarean, but then I told the doctors, no. Let us just make sure that she gives a normal birth. The baby, uh, the baby was coming, but he, he had a, a hand, you know. He had to come with the hands, and the doctor said that we can't, we can't do that. We'll damage the arm. So I told the Kenny, then just wait, and then let's see how it goes. And he also advised that. So by the time it got late hours, uh, automatically he just returned the arm to where it's supposed to be. We Amen. just said a prayer, but everything came to normal. And then awesome. around three, he gave birth and uh, he was a boy and we named him Nelson. Yes, yes. we heard. <laughs> awesome. awesome. I, just, I just became your dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be coming to you for I'll be coming to you for for, for inheritance, Dad. <laughs> but, you know, it's been it's been this is the best year. You know, ever since I met Ruben, it's been my it's been like a light to my entire life. And I decided that this year will be in our memory for the rest of our existence. Yeah. So I chose maybe let's call our kid Nelson. And that way, we will never forget this year. I love you guys so much. You've been such a beautiful to my life. Congratulations. Awesome. Congratulations again. Congratulations. Congratulations. And, and by the way, I have a question for you. Congratulations. By any chance, by any chance was it your birthday yesterday? Was it, uh, was it your birthday yesterday by any chance? No, it's uh, 15. My uh, birthday is supposed to be on 15. Uh, it's coming. Okay. 15th of what? 15th November. of what? November. You're joking. Pardon? Uh, are you, you on the 15th? Uh, you are joking. No, I'm, I was born on 15th of November. <laughs> there you go, Papa Luke. <laughs> That's my bed day. That's the November baby. Oh, and oh I'm no. 17. Same day, same 15. <laughs> <laughs> and how about that? November is going to be too much, then I guess. <laughs> no wonder we get on so well together. <laughs> <laughs> November babies. <laughs> I'm also happy. Hey, I'm 5 November. Wow. There you go. We have November a few. I, I just looked up the meaning of Nilshan again, and it means miracle, symbol, signature, mark, and a sign. Wow. So that's what your baby wow. is going to be. What? That's Hallelujah. Nilshan. And I told you, when my mom Nilshan. gave me the name Nilshan, it comes from Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. So Nilshan will be a really wonderful. Wow. You couldn't hear me? <laughs> Say it's that muted. again. He's yes. muted. Can't hear you. Your voice is even muted. muted. You know? Me. The voice of Daddy Ruben is, uh, I don't know. Okay. I was, Say I was too saying. Uh-huh. It's too loud. Okay. I was saying um, that the uh -huh. name Nilshan is a derivative from Nish Nilshan, which means miracle symbol signature mark. And and it's uh, it, it's a powerful name for your son, but it also comes no. from and my mom called me your son. It was from Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. Ruben, let, let's let's put my name because my name is a chosen. Tell to, him to <laughs> <do> my name. <laughs> yes, Mustafa is also uh, you're you're similar to mine. <laughs> Chosen. So, Stephen, <laughs> that name is going to mean is go, that baby is going to do, be a symbol of miracles and a signature of God. And a Amen. mark of this year. A mark. <laughs> it marks the year 2022. <laughs> what a blessing. Yeah.
Uh, Ooh, so yeah, wow. that's how it is. I'll make sure I uh, post her or maybe just link her up and then you guys can see her and see the baby. That will be probably on or something. Yeah, <laughs> that will be wonderful. And please convey our love to her as well and our congratulations. I will make sure that they get to her. <laughs> awesome, awesome, so good. So company of prophets, look at what the father is doing. Look at what is in store for us. Huh? So with that, I'm going to hand over to Pops Matthew to take us through um, the eighth wheel. Can you believe it? We got to the eighth wheel of the life-centered wheel of life. Um, and so Pops Matthew is going to go through the area of health. And uh, as we listen to what he has to say, let's listen as a com company of kings. Uh, because kings, remember, we have um, royal uh, solutions. The Father in heaven gives us, as kings, we have the ability to hear royal solutions. So let's listen out for what the Father is uh, downloading us, to us today because he loves us so much and he wants us to enjoy the inheritance that he has um, got for us. Amen. So, Pops Matthew, over to you. Oh, Ruben. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Ruben. Before Pops, before Pops uh, just shares, I really sense just to encourage everyone, we're talking about health today. Mm. And <clears throat> I just want, as Pastor Rubika said, listen now to what is being said here, because I think this is a groundbreaking area in the areas that Pops is going to cover that's really going to shift our lives for the next 10 years, but also shift the lives of the nations that we belong to. Um, understanding our health mentally, physically, spiritually is just going to be out of this world. It's something that <clears throat> has been detached from spiritual, the physical need for health, the emotional issues. and the So having those together and seeing it from a Christ-centered point of view is going to be just out of this world. But I feel like God is just really saying, don't just receive, but you're going to release as well. So receive it, learn this truth, live it out, and then begin to release it out as well. Um, and and yeah, just some exciting things ahead. So please pay attention to what is being uh, shared today uh, from a prophetic point of view as P Pop shares. Thanks, Thank Pops. you. Thank you, Ruben. I think, uh, I think you summarized it very well. And uh, because most of the time when we talk about health, we only think of, uh, you know, how to keep ourselves healthy, from a, from a physical perspective, but health is more than that. So we're going to cover that area as well. So thank you. So let me share my screen. Oh, I don't have share screen share. I've finished my presentation. <laughs> Keno, can you do the the deed for us, please? Oh, there it's, there it's done. All right. Okay. See, heaven has opened up now suddenly. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Rubika. Thank you, Ken. And thank you for everyone who is here today. Uh, we can just, uh, I just want to thank you for, uh, for you, everyone who has gone through this journey. Uh, I think we started this almost a year ago. I think, is it almost six months, at least six to seven months since we started the Wheel of Life, Christ Hunted Wheel of Life. And it's got, we have taken it at a pace where everyone could could actually benefit from it, learn from it. Uh, and we have taken it further down, you know, we have drilled down even further in certain areas, especially in the area like finance, wealth creation. And I must thank Ruben for the excellent job that he did there as well in terms of drilling down into uh, greater uh, depths in that area as well. So so I think as implementers, you know, we are, we are very grateful to everyone who's participating here. Uh, and, you know, this is a life-changing uh, Pro, uh, this training that we've been giving and uh, if you have missed any part of it you can always go back to our p61 channel youtube channel and you can watch it there uh, so so basically just to recap everybody you know we just want to let you know that uh you know we we when we do this we actually what we're saying is that it is about uh you know how to access how do we access abundant life in all areas of our life that means the the wheel is uh, you know is a circle. Uh, it's sort of uh, is every part must touch the ground. Every part must run smoothly, so that there is no uh, bumpiness in it. 
that cause any problems with our families and our personal life and our relationship with God as well. So we always look at it, what are the obstacles that is stopping us from having that abundant life? So that's why we actually, earlier at the beginning of this, this training, we talked about the wheel of uh, the uh, circle of uh, the, the learning circle. Yeah, the learning circle where you know how to uh, trace your problems, face it, and how you replace it with the word of God. Uh, so that is critical. And how do you know? And then we also need to set boundaries around us, so that healthy boundaries that gives us the the space uh, to do to 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 do what is effective in our life, while we also a blessing to others as well. Uh, and so this is what you know it's all about. And uh, so as I said, you know the wheel of the the car with the bump uh, with the with the punctured wheel, I think it speaks for itself. Uh, when you're driving, you if you have a bumpy one bump one wheel without a with a puncture. It's never going to be a smooth ride. So in any of these circle, uh, we cannot have any uh, issues that is you know, that causes problems, not only to us, our families, and those that affect us as well. Okay. Now, we also talked about the iceberg. Everybody uh, has an iceberg in their life. It is basically an uh, iceberg. As I said, it's always only the one-tenth we see what's outside on the top. Visible nine-tenth is underneath the water. Uh, but all our values and beliefs, as we grow up from childhood, uh, what we pick up is what becomes our behavior and our results. Uh, so again, this is another issue when you, especially if you, you have not really understood the kingdom or you're just being having a, being a, going through a religious life, uh, you know, whatever issues you've gone through in life, you'll never be able to see breakthroughs. And, and this is where uh, the kingdom is uh, of Understanding the kingdom of heaven is, is so critical because that actually liberate. Jesus said, I came to set captives free. Right? He said, I came to set the captives free. So once you understand uh, what kingdom means and what Jesus brought, whatever past issues you have in life, you should be able to face it, uh, tra trace it, face it, and replace it uh, with, the, with the truth of God. And that's what we're teaching you here as well. Okay? Now, Today, as I said, we're going to go through the last part of the circle. Uh, we're going to cover health. Health here covers my physical fitness, my mental fitness, and my emotional fitness, as well as my spiritual fitness. So there are four areas that we're going to look at uh, and to see what, how this should be, uh, we should be spending, uh, looking at this you know, in, in each one of our lives because that all four areas are affected in our life as well. Okay, so health. Then and now, I'm just going to go a bit of historical uh, statistics. Uh, during the Old Old Testament days, I mean, Old Testament days goes back to the time of uh, Adam and Eve uh, and all the way up to uh, coming of the New Testament when Jesus came, you know, so that's up to that phase. So people were much fitter. And you can see from the first days, they were living eight, 900 years, and then slowly the, it was shrinking, the age level was shrinking. Uh, because of uh, you know issues when they came more and more sin came into life into the world wickedness came into the world uh, and life span shortened uh, but you know but still the olden days people were much fitter because predominantly they were either in farming or in you know and in, in some sort of agriculture related so they're always outdoors working uh, very little work was done in the service industry so that's why they were much fitter those days uh, and then, of course, the Industrial Revolution came, and that changed everything. Uh, that changed uh, the whole uh, outlook for human being, and uh, it caused more stress, but it created also better, better medical facilities as well, so better health uh, was available to us. <clears throat> but when I say stress, because <clears throat> more and more people came from the uh, villages and uh, regional areas into the cities, uh, to work, so there was a lot of unhealthy habits, unhealthy conditions, uh, working was long hours, and uh, there was a lot of pollution. So this is what caused a lot of stress in people's life, and they were displaced from where they were to where they came from, came to. But in the process, you know, obviously uh, med better medical facilities came came about, so we were able to get uh, better medical benefits as well uh, from for our purpose for, for everyone. Now. Today, uh, health is a four US four four trillion. I put the USDT USD four T. It means 
US dollar, four trillion dollar industry. It's not billions, it's trillions, right? So it's a huge, one of the largest industry on earth. And people pay to be healthy nowadays, uh, whether it's physical, mental or emotional. It, and it's a big money, big industry. The pharmaceutical industries are huge. Uh, we have big hospitals, we got medical centers, we have uh, therapeutic centers, uh, you know, yoga, whatever you call it, you know, they are all to pointing towards uh, health, you know, and for human beings. And so it is a huge, huge industry. It's probably one of the largest, one of the two largest industries on earth. I think one is uh, medical health sector, which covers medical and all sorts of things under that. And obviously the next one I think is really the agriculture industry, farming and agriculture. So you can see that uh, it has become a huge uh, money-making industry. Uh, and why? Because people are not prepared to uh, do things, certain things that they can do for themselves. Uh, and I believe truly today, if every, every human being on earth who understood kingdom, I think this $4 trillion industry will shrink to maybe if, uh, you know, a, a, a few billion dollar industry uh, because many will not need those medication, medical issues. And, that, and that's where we're coming in as kingdom uh, minded people where we're transforming people's lives and give them see breakthroughs where we can empty out hospitals, uh, medical centers, you know, breakthrough uh, people with emotional issues, depression, oppression, all these are actually can be treated with the word of God by com coming to the word of God and listening and understanding God's uh, principles for our lives, things can change dramatically. Okay. And also due to more leisure and processed foods, many are becoming healthy now. Uh, leisure in a way that are good leisures. We talked about last the last session, uh, what is leisure and what are the good leisures and what are the bad. You know, sitting in front of TV, we eating corn chips and potato chips and watching TV all day. That is not, that is a bad leisure. That is purely wickedness, right? Still, uh, and you're just going to put on weight and become very unhealthy. And uh, you are just causing, you know, you're not only burden to your own and your family, but you're also burden to the government. Uh, to the country as well because you are not being responsible as a human being to taking care of your health. So it's just some of the areas where what the situation is now. Okay. And stress and depression are a major health issue today. You know, even in Australia today, uh, everybody, you, you know, pretty much a very high level of population, they say oh, they're having depression. Uh, why? Because they just you know, there is a high level of uh, alcohol consumption, high level of stress, uh, whatever it is, it is. Uh, these are things that, you know, we can easily get rid of without having medication. You know, these are things God has a solution for everything. So this is why we're going to talk, to talk about how, why health is important, but at the same time, what is the solution that, that, that God is giving us? Uh, to be, to make sure that we are in the peak of our health at every aspect of our life, okay? So, health, wellness is an undeniably attractive. Everybody wants to be healthy. Nobody wants to be sick. You know, some of the richest people in the world, you know, you look at uh, the guy who founded Apple. What's his name? Uh, because I'm not an Apple user, so I don't know his name. Steve Jobs. Your Steve favorite, Jobs. Steve yeah. Jobs. Sorry, bro, Ruben, yeah. So, Steve Jobs, you know, he was a Billionaire, multiple billionaire, but he couldn't heal. He couldn't get healing. Couldn't find uh, solutions to come overcome his uh, his uh, infirmities, his cancer. Uh, and that's not, he's just an example of a prominent. But there are many, many, many uh, wealthy people, billionaires, millionaires who can't uh, find solution for health. So what I'm saying is that money is not the solution for good health. Money is not, it doesn't provide, it helps a long way. If you got, you want to go and see a doctor, you want to get some medication, yes. But when it comes to uh, fatal uh, Ill sick illness, that is, you know, money is not helping at all. Uh, so this is what, uh, it is important to understand that. A, so a healthy body, a clear mind and a vibrant spirit is what we need. And we rightly want these for ourselves, our family and friends. Because when it comes to health, it is such an important issue. And for me personally, you know, it, my I, I've experienced that uh, with my late wife uh, when she went through seven years of uh, 
uh, you know, sickness and before she was called home, uh, for, for me and my children, it was heart wrenching, you know, even though whatever medical, the best medical was available, but there was no solution. So it is heart wrenching. And, you know, for me today, even I miss her today, even very much, uh, you know, all the things that I want to do, we want to do, we can't do because she's, she's no longer there. Uh, so I always believe health is critical. Uh, and we, you know, as implementers, we always talk about it. We, we, under, we say, you know, that's why we even like today, I say, even though I'm 71 years old, I for a moment never think I'm 71. I'm looking, I feel more like a 50 or a 55 year old person, right? Why? Because I look, the word of God is important, inspires me and keeps me young, keeps me youthful, right? At the same time, I make sure I keep look after my health by eating the right food, I go for, to the exercise, do some, ex, go to the gym to do exercise. So that we, why? Because until the day God calls me home or until the day Jesus comes here, if I'm still alive here, I want to be serving the Lord. And you can't be serving the Lord if you, there is ailment in your body, you are, you are, it's a distraction to you, right? So this is why health is so critical for, that means we're talking about not only physical health, we're talking about emotionally you're healthy, uh, spiritually, you're healthy, right? And socially, you're healthy because we, when we meet people, when people see you young and vibrant and be able to talk to them, you know, even that when I remember in August, when Jerry you know, at our conference, Jerry was playing the, you know, the, the dance, I was I could follow through, start and to the end and finish it. Oh, that was amazing, you know, even though I was after that, I was panting for about another five minutes, <laughs> right? <clears throat> but what I'm saying is that. Health is critical for to live a full life on earth, serving the Lord, having a one, you know, taking care of our families, and above all, that the the joy, the peace that that's in us, is critical. Okay, so let's not really ignore treat health as just a physical thing, but more than that. But having said that, at face value, of course, health is good. Right, but like so many good things, there are many, many other good things in life: family, work, romance, sex, leisure, money, sports. Right, but the Bible exhorts these us not to make any of these things ultimately central in our life. Okay, so that is why when Jesus said, "You know, love your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbors as yourself," that you know, so basically he's saying. Put God first. Put the Father and the Holy God, Jesus first. When it and that's when again Matthew six thirty three comes in, right? Uh, seek first your kingdom and His righteousness. All things are added to us, including our health, our well being. Everything is added to us. So it's very important to see where we get our priority right in this area as well. Okay, <clears throat> and as I like, uh, so these good things cannot be the source of identity, meaning our meaning in life. The living God must take center stage in our hearts. Anything else we put is first is idolatry. You know, sometimes when I go to the gym, I see people, I see them there, you know, the amount of hours I go there, I spend about an hour, an hour and a half, I finish. But there are people who come before me and they're still there when I leave. And uh, they're just spending hours trying to, you know, fitness, fitness, fitness. But what is the goal? What are you trying to object in? What are you trying to achieve? Right? So there is a bad sense of balance here. And once you understand <clears throat> what the the what the principle around the, the what God's uh, love uh, rule, principles around us, we should then automatically everything is a balance. Everything is a, is a balance. You can't put one above the other except the word of except God. Okay, so <clears throat> God is more focused. <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me. So God is more focused on our spiritual health than our health, our physical health, right? But that doesn't mean uh, that does not mean that He doesn't want us to be. He wants to be unhealthy or suffering from disease. Healing and casting out unclean spirits are common in the Bible, right? So if you have spiritual health as your priority, then from the Word of Knowledge, from the Word of God, you know how to balance your life, right? And you know how to do everything according to the way God has laid out uh, his plan for mankind. So that's why I said, you know, we must focus first and focus on the spiritual health. 
then we look at our physical health and, and social health and so on. So, so that's why it is important because clearly the Bible demonstrates physical health is important because you know there's so many examples of even Jesus, how he went about healing, casting out demons, setting captives free and so on. So God knows that these are issues in human beings' life. But if we understand who he is and we put him first, he will, you know, he will help us to get through all these issues in life as well. Okay. And I like this John 3, John 1, 2 summarizes very well. He said, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. See, the soul is tied to the spiritual health right and if the soul is well your emotional health is well uh, and then you 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 also enjoy the physical health that comes along with it right so 3 john 12 is, is an important scripture i pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you even as your soul is getting along well or as it, even some scripture says even as your soul prospers okay so it's important to understand the priority when it comes to health. So while we may be spiritually strong, we also need to glorify God through our physical health as well. Because if you're not physically well, we cannot, uh, we're not in a position to be able to glorify God as well as we do, as well as we should. Uh, for example, if we want to go and do healing, healing service, if we ourselves have uh, disability, uh, you know, people, when people come, you go and pray for people, people might not have the same level of faith uh, in you because when they look at your physical condition they're going to be distracted as well so that's why it's very important for us to have spiritual as well as physical health uh, that comes to, goes along with it and the bible teaches us how we should treat our mind body soul and soul in the way that god intends okay so when our when our soul is our spirit is doing well in harmony with god our soul is well where it's free of all uh, anxieties or depression and oppression, emotional issues, and then you know physically our body is also hell well, uh, then we know that we are actually in sound, we have a sound mind. Right? God wants us to have a sound mind, and that's what it's all about. And when we have a sound mind, we are in a better position from a health perspective in every area of our lives. So I'm going to talk about four areas of health. Health can be grouped into the following categories. Okay, I'm going to talk about spiritual, physical, emotional, and social. So you can see from here, health is not just about being physical. Uh, and that's where many of the human beings, today's people get it wrong because they think they can go to the gym or they can go jogging, you know, they can go swimming, whatever it is, that, that, that is what keeps them healthy. But I have known people who have actually been fit, health, physically fit, but while they're jogging, they collapse and die. They're in their early 30s, right? Why? Because there are other emotional issues that they have not addressed. So we've got to be very careful. We've got to make sure it's a balanced uh, approach to health. Okay, let's look at the spiritual side. Some of the examples is, of course, uh, you know, I'm starting with Romans 12, 9 to 21. It's a good example of spiritual wellness where it says we are part of the body, uh, even though we have different parts of the body, but we are all one. So we need to make sure that we are helping each other, encouraging each other, and to keep us uh, in, in good health as well. So and the questions you need to ask is, am I increasing in my love of God? So that's coming back to the first, loving God first, putting God first. So that's where our priority should be. Am I increasing in my love of God? Am I in, How am I doing? How is my, my health? Uh, with my in my relationship with God today, I mean, we talked about after the song, uh, some of the prophetic words that were given, right? And it is He who, when we put Him first, all things are added to us. So it is important that we intentionally grow in intimacy with the God every day. Every day, you know, we should grow even deeper in intimacy with Him, so that He can give us revelation about any situation that we need to be aware of, whether it comes to health or finance or whatever it might be. Okay. The second question I'm, I, you should ask yourself is, am I increasing in my hatred of sin? Right. This is from, this is from Romans 12. I'm breaking down the scripture verses nine from nine onwards. Am I increasing in my hatred of sin? That means am I 
as I grow in intimacy with God, am I now becoming less and my thoughts and my deeds, are they becoming less and less uh, sinful? That means am I, that, that I'm not move, going walking away from God. I'm actually growing closer and closer and closer to him. Okay. Number three, you should say, am I increasing in intimacy with God? Right. Uh, so if you increase intimacy with God, uh, God or pre uh, alerts us to any particular situation that we may face. And he will guide us through to the Holy Spirit. Right. Next question you should ask is, am I increasing in my love of others? This is from verse 10, 14 to 18. Am I increasing in my love of others you see when you when you start questioning all these things and you start asking yourself and you start applying these things you will begin to see even when you're sick there are sickness because now you're drawing closer to god you're actually automatically you will receive physical healing will come into your body because now you're doing the things going away from the things that causes uh, sickness depression oppression and it's in, in our physical body right? So when you start doing the right things, all that things will go away and you become a much more healthy person as well, right? Now, the next question you can ask, am I increasing the fruits of God's spirit, right? So we again, we got to ask, in each of the gifts of the fruits of the spirit, where am I? How am I growing in those areas? So you can ask those things as well. And you know, am I increasing in generosity to God and others? Am I now being a blessing to others Apart from my generosity to God, I'm also how my blessing of being a blessing to others as well. So these are some questions that you can ask. Am I increasing in forgiveness? You know, forgiveness is one of the root causes of infirm sickness in physical body, emotional issues, stress, right? Anger, bitterness comes in. So when you start forgiving people, <clears throat> all these things will disappear. And you are more free in your body, in your, in your body becomes free. Uh, there is less stress in your body. There's no bitterness, no anger, and there's more peace in you. And there's more peace in you. <clears throat> your body is much more healthy in, in terms of being able to uh, go through life in a much more uh, comfortable uh, lifestyle. Okay. So these are some of the questions you can ask yourself from a spiritual health point of view. Am I increasing my love with God? Am I increasing my hatred, my hatred of sin? Am I increasing in intimacy with God? Am I in my am I increasing my love for others? Am I increasing in the fruits of God's spirit? Am I increasing in generosity to God and others? Am I increasing in forgiveness? Right? And I look at this list and I check it against my, myself where I am. The answer, I will tick everything. I'll say yes. I am tick, I can tick every one of these because you know, at my age, and if I've not done all these things, I'm in trouble. I don't think I'll be feeling like a 50 or 55 year old person, right? So when, when you're starting to get, get rid of all these issues, you know, your, your youth renews, your strength renews, right? And you become a much more healthier person, not only physically, but also spiritually. Because now why you're becoming, having a better intimacy with the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, because you're beginning to live and breathe the word of God that is inside you. Amen? So that's very important to understand that. Okay? So some ways you can increase our spiritual health. <clears throat> Excuse me. One, fulfill our, your purpose with the body of Christ. In Romans 12, I've said that. And 1 Corinthians, so he said, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. We need to use the gifts that God gives us. So when we apply those gifts, like what I pointed out earlier, you know, you're forgiving, you're helpful to others, you're applying the gifts of the spirits, you're exercising in all those things. So that spiritual exercise that you're actually building up and strengthening in yourself actually gives you a peace of mind, joy, love, everything sort of comes into you. Okay. Next thing is we need to take responsibility. Let the Holy Spirit grow and use you in God's work, good work through the church, through his church. I mean, the church is us. Right, we need to be more have more in, more in tune with the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit telling me? Right, when Jesus walked to this earth, he he without the power of the Holy Spirit in him, he couldn't have accomplished what he did. But he at the same time he said, "I only do what the Father shows me to do," and that's only through the Holy Spirit. So we need to have that have that intimacy with the Holy Spirit 
who will now be guide our advisor and our helper as jesus said okay and in the, as a kingdom people we are to be uh, part of the church uh, where we, we strengthen each other help each other comfort each other intentionally fellowship develop caring and committed relationships so where we where we have both compassion and capacity when we are compassion capacity we we are in a position where we can be joyfully doing a lot of things like you know we try, you know between us here you know we have shared with you so many things that we do we can go to anywhere in the world like now we've been to africa for two and a half months now ruben is there for another couple of months you know we're not worried about our financial uh, restrictions but at the same time when we are there all doing all those things we're also doing the kingdom work you know we're not we're doing both and that's what i'm talking about compassion and capacity helps us to transform other people's lives as well and when you have compassion and capacity and when you're transforming other people's life you're no longer thinking about yourself right now you're thinking of others and that brings joy not only to us but to the lord as well so you're no longer looking at any physical defects in your body anymore because you know that because the word of god gives you that this truth is in you and you you're supernaturally you know you're performing two things on this earth the natural things and the supernatural things that is that's available to us right and that's one of the things that we need to be mindful of okay humbly serve share towards each other in times of need and go out to show Christ's love in you know in a tangible way and which is what we are we are talking you know as kingdom people children uh, sons and daughters of the father you know we are representing the father in of in on this earth right and the father heartbeat is love right so when his heart is love then we should represent the father's heart on this earth through what by 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 re reflecting him through us so when we serve humbly that you know we are not looking for any uh, any recognition right you know when i was uh, when my when i was uh, before, when i was first a, still a hindu uh, and i was uh, a direct sales director for a comp large multinational company i was a member of the rotary club right you know rotary club right they do a lot of charity work projects so i was happy to be there because every project we do there be we'll invite the press the press will uh, you know I'll write an article they'll publish it in newspapers and we feel good about it we'll cut and put it in our record book prof, you know projects each year what's accomplished but when i the moment i came to know the lord i left i left rotary because i said that is wrong because jesus said do not know do not let your right hand know what your left hand is doing right so that means you do only to please the father because all we need to know is the father knows he needs to know what we're doing that's all we matters right so we don't have to go physically out there and take uh, recognition for ourselves in everything we do we serve humbly we glorify god in in that in that process okay so we passionately worship ascribe glory to god and enjoy his presence so all this is part of spiritual health because the more intimacy we build with god the more we are feel excited liberated and you know we feel like a supernatural persons okay Uh, courageously evangelize loving connect lovingly connect people to christ by intentionally sharing the gospel message again you know we have already shown you how this can be done we've seen so many uh, testimonies from uh, mercy that what she does there even in the you know oppressed state like Mer in myanmar where the army is in control she is doing amazing things there right right now even pastor victor is out there in some of the villages he's evangelizing so and when we go to africa and wherever we go we evangelize and even last uh, skate park we were there last sunday this this lebanese man comes along you know we bring him in he first he didn't want to come and join us he was reluctant i asked him would you like a, a, a sausage and a roll he said no 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 i'm okay then he said oh can i have some water please i said okay we gave him a bottle of water then after that he said yeah now i like the sandwich and the sausage and then after that he took a plate and he helped himself with the with the burger patty and the salad and everything and he ended up talking to us he then he opened up all his problems right and we prayed with him and he received the lord and there you go he's now a man with so much of peace so you see we should be courageous we need to be god says if you jesus say if you deny me i shall deny you to my father right 
So we must, because the moment we are called is a special, amazingly special privilege for us. And that is part of our health because when you go boldly, we, have, we are somehow subconsciously, we feel stronger, healthier, and more, more determined in what we do. Right? And constantly pray, speak to, with God personally, regularly for one another. I'm not saying you just talk everything and do pray. Uh, that is religion. We, when we pray here, we pray even whatever in the midst of whatever we're doing. We can pray, pray in tongue, pray to the in silently to the Father, have a communication with Him, uh, and that's what it's all about. So, so that's exciting. Okay, and finally, teach yourself and others personally and corporately to study God's Word. Right, because the God's Word is the truth, and we talked about the learning curve. If you know something is wrong. What is the Bible saying about this matter? So how do I face it, trace it, replace it, and, and become a new, new being, uh, which will help give me uh, spiritual health as well as physical health. Okay. Now, the next one is physical. Physical, I think, is quite straightforward. Exercise takes a lot of discipline, but there are some benefits. You know, when I sometimes, sometimes I don't feel like going to the gym, even though I've committed myself to go to the gym three times a week, right? Sometimes I think, mm, I don't, you know, got to go there, got to get changed, you know, and got cycling for half an hour. What a boring thing, cycling, you know. But I enjoy rowing. I love rowing. I sit on the rowing, I can row, right? And then the machine. But I intentionally step into my, put on my clothes, I change, I go to them. The moment I get to the gym, I love it. I enjoy it. Why? While I'm doing, I'm also having meeting people, talking to people, having a nice conversation, getting to know them, building relationship with them, with one goal, of course, that we can bring them to the kingdom. Okay, uh, so this is why exercise takes a lot of self-discipline, but there are benefits. You feel more energetic. Uh, if I would explain that to you over and over again, more confident because you feel good. Uh, you sleep better. You build strong bones. You age more gracefully, like me, right? And uh, uh, you you improve your brain health. Hey, my brain health is is is, is still the same, if not better than before. Okay, so uh, strengthen your muscles, and I be believe me, my muscles are strong. Right, and uh, feel happier. True, improve your immune system. That's true because thank God I've never got COVID in my life, and I I know it will never come near me because I know who I am. Okay, so so this you know lose weight. I've, I've always been mindful of my weight, save money on health. So yeah, I, look, the only medication I take is supplements. I take vitamins, omega-3, fish oil, and vitamin C. That's all. I'm not taking any other medication. So I don't have to go and spend money in the pharmacy buying medicines. Okay. And, and that's a huge, huge relief. You know, I remember when my wife was going through her sickness you know, the hospital where she was going to, there was a top hospital in Melbourne. Thank God, fortunately, because everything was under Medicare, Medicare, you know, because we didn't pay a single cent. But honestly, if you have to pay for her medication for seven years, I tell you, I will, I will be a pauper today. I will be able to spend millions of dollars. Right? So that's why I know, even if you're a billionaire, if you can't get healing, it means nothing. Okay? So we need to, why do we, that's why today you can look at the trip, it's a medic, uh, health is a $4 trillion industry. Why? Because people are popping pills for every little things. Right? You go to a doctor, you say you got a headache, he gives you a pill. You say you got a cold, he gives you a pill. Right? They're, they're working for the pharmaceutical industry. And they're protecting the job because the, the pills you take don't heal you. They just slow down the symptoms. That's all. You got to keep going back and then again and again, right? So all the most of the medication in the world today is is, a, is not to heal you, but it is to slow down that that process so that you can keep on buying, right? If your blood pressure is a lifetime tablet taking, right? And I had my boy, my doctor told me I have borderline blood pressure, and I'm supposed to take tablet every day. The tablet is sitting in the first box he gave me is still sitting in my drawer. Right? It's probably expired by now. Right. And I don't feel anything about it. So why? Because we know who our father in heaven is. We know who is our authority we have. 
we know the power and authority because we can heal ourselves. Right? So we need to be, but health is important, but through physical exercise is important. Right? It improves relationship as well because when you're healthy in the family, you're not burdening anybody. Right? So that's another way of understanding that physical exercise is so important for us as well. Okay? Some scriptures to help you here. Uh, <coughs> 12, Roman 12, 1 says, you are a living sacrifice. You know, we are uh, and and the, I like the 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, you're a body, a temple of the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, uh, and do not run aimlessly. That means don't overdo, overwork, and do something just purely to for selfish satisfaction, right? And and But we also need to work vigorously. When I say work vigorously from a place of rest, it's not from a physical, uh, from a hard, hard, hard labor. Okay, so these are some examples that I'm talking about here from the physical exercise. Right now, let's look at emotional. Emotional is one of the most important silent killers in this world. It's the biggest sickness, sick pro sickness problem in this world, and people don't recognize it. Okay, some of the emotional symptoms of emotional health is anger, fear, resentment, bitterness, sadness, anxiety, and depression. Because these are signs. For us to attend to because that these are some of the emotional health cause that causes he emotional health problems. When you have these emotional issues, then it'll affect your physical issue health. It also will affect your spiritual health. Right. So this is the most important area we need to address. Once you address your emotional health, everything else becomes easier for you to manage in life. Okay. Because of anger, fear, people kill each other, kill people. Right, they get they destroy families, okay, and, and so all kinds of things, bitterness and unforgiveness, these are all things that cause unnecessary problems in families and in relationships. Okay, so the, if any, if all the health, I think the emotional health is the most important one. And in fact, I know this because I've done uh, inner healing uh, in the past where we take people through. Uh, issues in life, what is the root cause, we identify what's the root cause of the emotional issues, and then we pray with them and break those things, and then they become better persons as well. So emotion health is the most important one. Once you master this, everything else will become easier in life. So some questions you can ask yourself when facing these issues. You say, Lord, I feel like a failure, but what do you say is true? You, know, you use the learning circle. Go back to the learning circle. Why am I feeling this way? What is the root cause? God will reveal to you something during your younger days or adult, you know, your school days, something that has happened in you that is triggering this over and over and over again, right? So once you understand the root cause of it, you can then uproot it and then you, you become free of those emotional issues, right? You can say, if you see you're anxious, you say, you can ask the Lord, Lord, I'm anxious about this, this, this situation. What are you, you know, what, what is really going on here? God will reveal. This is why God has given us the Holy Spirit. Okay? Because Christ is living in us, formed in us. And he's always there to help us to see, set, set us through, free of all these bondages. Why does this bother me so much, Lord? You know, something might be bothering you consistently. It could be, you know, uh, something you're fearful or some sort of anxiety that keeps on coming back to you. So again, you got to go back and find out what's the root cause of it, okay? And then you can ask, Lord, what do I really believe at, in this moment, right? Because your, your, you know, your situation can be changed. And I love people, sometimes I talk to people, I, I look at their symptoms, I talk to them. You know, I have a conversation with them. Then through conversation, we can, I, God will reveal to you what is your root problem. You know, okay, did this happen to you in your life, early age? This happened, they will say, yes, this confirmed. Okay, now let's pray and cut that, right? And then they will suddenly see some freedom in their lives. So inner healing is a very important thing for emotional health, right? Some scriptures to help us with emotional health. Uh, Psalm 18.20 says, God made us my life complete. God has given us a complete life, right? Free of any encumbrance or obstacles in our life. But we need to know how to uproot it from ourselves. If you don't know, you can ask someone to pray with you who have got some experience in uh, healing uh, or counseling in, uh, in, uh, in uh, what I call inner healing. 
you know, they they are very well prepared for these sort of things, you know. And uh, for six Philippians four six seven says, "Be anxious for nothing." Okay, in everything you know, submit to me uh, in prayer and supplication, and you know, and I will give you the peace. Right. So talk to God as often as possible when you're having these issues, and He will slowly heal you, uproot it over time. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Psalm ninety four. When my anxious thoughts multiply, your consolation delights my soul. You know, David is always talking to God openly and it, it's such a, with such uh, trust in God, you know, and talk to God, speak to him, and he will show you how to overcome these things. Isaiah 41 10 says, I am your God, I will strengthen you. Right? So, so there are enough, more than enough scriptures in the, in the Bible for us to understand how to overcome emotional issues. So as I said, of all the four, this is the crux. When you get this under control, everything else becomes beautifully, you know, will be clearing up for your life. <clears throat> so social, <clears throat> social health is how good are you with people? <clears throat> you know, because of emotional issues, sometimes you're in, in, you got anxiety, fear, you do not want to mix with people. You hold back. You become, uh, you know, ex introvert. You just sort of, uh, you know, keep yourself to yourself because you feel fearful of talking to people, and if they ask, you feel that you might not be comfortable with a conversation. So being able to form relationships, able not to make awkward situations, make and feeling secure when you're around other people, I think it's a very important thing. You know, uh, I think for me, I can go anywhere, meet anybody. I'm totally comfortable. I'm happy to have, can have a conversation. Even though sometimes I don't have to talk, they, you know, sometimes I go for meetings, you know, networking, I hardly talk. I don't have to talk because I know who I am. Only I talk when I need to talk, but I'm not feeling awkward about it, right? Because why? Because I know my identity. I know who I am. I am not uh, looking for attention, right? So it's important that, and when you're in that level, you're, you're at peace. Uh, you're a peacemaker wherever you go there. You can mix with them, any person, doesn't matter what position they may have, whether they're wealthy or poor, it doesn't matter. You know, like uh, when we, especially when I went to Africa this time in March, April, you know, I'm meeting a lot of new people in life, right? And yet I was totally at peace and totally at home with them. Uh, there was nothing that I felt awkward about it. Okay, so this is what important. So health, social health is very important. Okay, and some why social health is important. Number one, sense of belonging and purpose. It gives us longer life, contentment, reduce stress, etc. Right. Important to show respect, trustworthiness, etc. Like uh, you know, last two weeks I was away in Malaysia. I haven't met my, my siblings and my friends for three years. All right. I was, when I went there, it was, I was able to mix with them just like normal, uh, you know, whatever, they were having some issues and challenges, which I was able to sit and mix, talk to them. You know, I went to my bro my brother-in-law's house in Deepavali. Deepavali is a Hindu festival of lights, you know, uh, and because I know what they do. So they, my, my brother-in-law and my dog sister, they have a huge altar upstairs on the upstairs in the house. You know, they have all the gods there. And then they also had the pictures of my parents uh, who passed away and, and he, their son who passed away when he was 16 years old. And uh, so they asked me to come and pray with them. I said, okay, I'll come along. I went upstairs. They all prayed with the temple. I didn't pray for the idols. But when they came to pray for the pa my parents and his son, his son, I, I joined them. I said, okay, but I joined them not uh, bowing down or whatever. I just... I say, I thank the Lord. Lord, I thank you for the life of my parents. I thank you for the life of, uh, you know, my nephew who passed away. Uh, I, and I, I just prayed. That's all I prayed, right? Nothing else. And everything else I participated as far as that is concerned. And they were very happy. You know, they're so happy that I was able to participate in that prayer. And then after that, we went down, had a breakfast, healthy, healthy breakfast. Uh, and uh, yeah, so look, the thing is, if you feel, you know, oh, I'm a believer, I'm a Christian, I cannot go, with, you know, then you are, who are you? You are then putting yourself lower. You are disrespecting your God, who is the highest God in the world. 
you think their, your God is inferior to their God. Right? But when I went there, I spoke to them. I said, not a problem. Right? And they were happy. Like even today, uh, to yesterday, my, my sister, the younger, younger of the two sisters. So we're planning now to go to India uh, to visit my relatives because I haven't seen them for 25 years. You know, my sisters, we all go there every year to the temples. So they every time they go there, they, the, my uncles will always ask, when is his brother coming? When is his brother coming? We want to see him. We want to see him. So I said, okay, we will go this time. I'll go next year, February. We'll plan a trip. So my sister said, oh, when you're there in India, would you like to come with us to the temple, this big temple, come and join us and pray for our parents? I said, no. I draw my line, right? I'm coming for a different purpose. I'm not coming there to bow down to your gods and listen to your God. And you know me who I am. You know, I love you guys. But that is something, you know, it's good for you. But I, this is something that I told her. I told her straight away. I said, hey, look, God, my, my God says he's inside of me. Right? I don't have to go searching for him. I don't have to go to temple after temple to go and pray and look for him. Right? I can pray and worship him wherever I am. And he answers my prayers. Right? She kept quiet, right? So you see, we need to also be put a draw our boundary where we need to, but with love, not with condemnation, right? And that's part of social health. We, once you understand the your boundaries and etic, etic, etiquettes that you need to practice, it becomes beautiful, right? So again, some scriptures, uh, you know, not all not good to be alone. Uh, Genesis two eighteen says. Uh, we are never created to be alone as a human being. If, you know, there are moments, yes, we can be alone, but it's always God has made, made us to be in, live in, in relationships. 1 Corinthians 15, 30, you say bad, bad company ruins good morals. You must choose who you want to socialize with. Because if you socialize with the wrong people, you're going to, they're going to pull you down and you're going to get into situations that is going to be are not pleasant for you or for your family or even it's not honoring God, okay? Uh, so it is important. And then Hebrews 10, 25 says, encourage one another. The, one of the reasons why you go to social meetings is have social relation, uh, it's, uh, socialization is because it's an opportunity to encourage one another, right? So it, that's, it's very, and then breaking, you know, to, and then uh, uh, if you look at Acts 2, 46, they went breaking out, break from house to house. Why? They were building up and strengthening each other. Building up and strengthening each other, right? So social relationship is very, very important, right? Like today, you know, one of the uh, ladies, uh, she was uh, invested in, in the TFXR that we're in. She has recently gone through some serious health issues, right? So she's been trying to get some money out of TFXI, but she didn't, she forgot how to withdraw the money. Right, so she she WhatsApp, she sent me a telegram. She said, Matthew, can you please help me? So I spoke to her briefly, and from the conversation, the moment I spoke to her, I could see that she was going through a recuperating from a serious uh, either surgery. She didn't want to talk too much about it, but it's very obvious that she could hardly have a healthy conversation. And she said, Matthew, I need money. I need to take some other money out from TFI side. Okay, I said, fine. So she said, I, she said, but I don't know how to do. I forgot. I said, okay. So I arranged a Zoom call with you today. So this morning I had a Zoom call with her and I spent time with her, you know, almost an hour so helping her through step-by-step, -step, setting up the bank account, uh, how to withdraw the money. And, uh, you know, but to me, that is part of social health, right? Uh, you see, when that person is so blessed, so happy that I was able to do that for her and she was so grateful, right? So. This is what it means to have a social. Social health is not about what can I get from these meetings or social relationship or the people are meeting. It's what can I give? Because Bible is very clear. The more you, you give, on, then the God will give you more, right? So into others. So social relationship is about how can I be a blessing when I go to those meetings or those gatherings, right? It's not about you getting what you want. Okay. And same thing, and I was in Malaysia for two weeks holiday. Uh, I signed up three people for TRIUMPH, TFXI, right? I went to one of my former neighbors when my house I was living in. Uh, I went to look at the house, and suddenly my neighbor, next door neighbor, was he came out, 
And, and we, he said, come in, come in, Matthew. I haven't seen you for so many years. And we went inside. He and his wife were retired. And then we start talking for about half an hour. And he said, what are you doing? I said, I explained to him. I do investment, blah, blah, blah. He said, tell me more. Right? He said, I'm interested. Sign me up. Done. Right? Then my brother-in-law in Penang, he was there. Uh, his brother-in-law from Singapore came to be. He wanted to. I told him, hey, I'm going there. You want to come? He and his wife came along. Right? And they spent three days with us. And we had a great relationship, went out shopping, fe feasting on food, right? And uh, in the end, he also asked me, what are you doing? I said, yeah, I'm doing this. He said, Matthew, sign me up. Straight away, within half an hour, he insisted, this is my passport. This is my uh, proof of residence. Yeah, I want you to sign me up right now, in half an hour. And he gave me cash straight away because he's a chairman of a security company in Singapore. So he's pretty loaded, right? So you, you see what I'm saying? When you actually give, Social health is about giving. Huh? So the more you give, the more people will give back to you. Right? So, and it's a joy because people love what you when you give. And when you learn, they're learning something from you, something new. Right? They're, they're receiving something that they have never had, had it before. And this is what it's all about. This is what social health is about. So when I go for meetings, it's not I'm single, I'm not going for meetings, say, what can I get out of it? No. I go there always, what can I give? What, how can I be a blessing in that area, in that, in that situation? And that's what social health is all about, okay? And that give, when you're going there to give, you're going with such confidence because you're not, uh, because you're going with the intention of taking something, then your, your purpose and your, your priority is different. You are becoming very selfish in what you're trying to do there in that meeting. But when you go freely to give, you go with total freedom. There's so much of joy, health. You go there you, and you don't mind. Even if you get nothing out of it, it doesn't matter. Right? And that's what social health is all about. So social health is being able to give to people in that, in that group or that meeting. Right? And that's what it's all about. So, so these are the four areas. But as I said, the most important is the emotional. If you address that, everything else will fall into place. So again, the, the, our famous triangle, uh, to be in the right health, what does God say about health? You know, always look to God for direction. Uh, what is he talking to you about? Health? Look at the scriptures, what he can say. Uh, doing together with my, what can, what can, how do I uh, build up our healthy relationship with my spouse, my family, my colleagues, extra? That's inward looking. And then using health as an evangelistic activity. What can we do going out there? you know, like organizing sports or soccer, like what we do in Kenya now with the rugby, you know, that is a, a very healthy uh, evangelistic activity, which gives some health, social, it gives social benefits, it gives uh, physical benefits, right? Uh, and emotional, it covers everything that we're talking about and spiritual as well, right? So these are some of the things that we can see value uh, in when it comes to the area of health, okay? So some questions, oh, where's my questions? Slide gone. I must have hidden it by accident. Just give me a second. Uh, let me stop that. I must have pressed hide on it. Yep, I've hidden the slides. Just give me a second. Okay, so let me go back and share screen. Here we go, share. Okay, so these are some of the questions that I'm actually uh, posting there for you. Okay, right up in there. All right, there we go. To, to look at the four areas I covered, okay. How am I increasing in my spiritual health? You can take a picture of everyone. Uh, what can I do to improve my physical health? What am, am I having emotional health issues? Uh, what can I do? Right. Again, that's the number one. Number three, I always believe is the most critical one. Is my social health where it should be? Right. So these are some of the questions we're going to talk. And now I'm passing over to Pastor Rubika to organize the uh, breakout rooms so that we can actually have uh, some questions around or conversation around what was discussed.
Over Amen. to you, Pastor Rubika. Amen. And I'm going to put I'm going to put the questions there as well. There you go. Awesome. That's so great. Thank you once again, Pops Matthew, for a, a very uh, wonderful teaching. And we're now going to go into the breakout rooms so that we can spend some time. Remember, we've been listening to this um, as kings, right? Looking for godly solution, listening out to what the Father has for us as godly solutions in our lives and maybe even in the lives of our loved ones or friends or uh, colleagues. We don't know what it is that the Lord really wants for in each of our lives. So let's go into the breakout rooms with that attitude as well um, and see what Father has in store for us. Amen. Um, so with that, I'll ask Ken to put us into the room. So the rooms will be facilitated by Pops Matthew, myself, Papa Luke, and Ken and Ruben will be in the fourth room. Thank you, Ken. Would you like to whisk us away, please? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Rubika. We we'll open up the uh, breakout rooms for everyone. Awesome. Thank you. Um, 